koto, tena koto, tena koto katoa. I consider it a privilege to share in this devotion, especially during this time of pandemic, to encourage one another and to pray for one another. Our lives have been affected in so many ways by this pandemic. It has turned our lives upside down. We have been struggling to find ways to tolerate stay-at-home orders, to learn new routines within our social isolation, and for many to incorporate the education of their children during the day while school remains closed. And above all, our stress and anxieties are piqued by fears. Our sorrows run especially deep as, as we see many around us, if not even ourselves, who have lost jobs, jobs that have sustained them and their families. And furthering these emotions, people of faith are experiencing a great suffering of their spirit through the ongoing inability to worship as a church. When will we get back to normal? Will we ever get back to normal? I imagine the Israelites also talked about and wondered if they would ever return to normal. And if and when they did, would things ever be like they were before? In the Old Testament, Isaiah is speaking to the Hebrew people during a particularly big, bleak and desperate time. Following all these, they were left with questions like, Is God not powerful? Is God not faithful? How do we find hope while we are in exile or in isolation? How do we move beyond this bleak period? Is their life after exile? So Isaiah has to remind them again and again. Like a good prophet, Isaiah reminds them of their faith that defines their identity. And they know the story, wandering in the wilderness. And they know how God in his grace, love and mercy led them and provided their needs. They experienced the presence of God by fire and a pillar of cloud. They know, but they needed to be reminded by Isaiah. God gives strength to the weary, Isaiah reminds them, and increases the power of the weak. Even youth will grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Like a good shepherd, Isaiah is drawing back to the faith that defines their identity during the time of exile and crisis. When will we get back to normal? Will we ever get back to normal? Our normal will not be the same, nor will we be. We so often come to discover during and after a crisis passes, there are silver linings and often beautiful byproducts that emerge through the sorrow and pain. This crisis, this pandemic should be no different. There is something that we can all learn and carry with us through and beyond this experience. We of all ages have now come to know better the pain and sorrow as well as the heartbreak of true isolation. We have experienced the frustration that comes from being stuck in our homes. We have now lived with the anguish of the loneliness of not being in the daily presence of friends and family and neighbours, or not being able to be with children or grandchildren and feel their precious hugs and experience that tender touch of another human person. We know, we now know firsthand these feelings of loneliness that isolation brings. 
our social distancing and isolation of today is only temporary and will end. But for many in our communities, it will go on way beyond this pandemic. Our living sense of compassion can and must be enhanced by the internalization of these feelings that we are experiencing these days. As a people of faith, we can and must emerge from this pandemic more empathetic, more compassionate than ever to the reality of loneliness that so many experience each day. What we now feel must serve as the spark needed to light the flame of desire, to, to do more, to be present to those among us who suffer the inability to move beyond their homes and those whose physical disabilities cause them to remain virtually prisoners within their own homes, isolated in so many ways from the world around them. We need to find purpose behind this dark cloud that can bring new life to the vulnerable among us. We need to store away these feelings of today, lock them in the brain centers of emotion and in our heart chambers of compassion and unleash them through the power of the Holy Spirit once this all ends. And let, and let us be moved into action as we recall in sacred scriptures, John chapter 10, verse 10, which tells us that I, Christ, came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Let us now allow anyone among us, let us not allow anyone among us to live short of that abundant life while in our midst. Let's be sure to bring life to all and bring it to the fullest. Amen. Will you please join me in prayer? Prayer for a new normal. The world as we knew it is gone, dear Lord. And for what feels, feels like such a long time, we have experienced so much hardship during this pandemic. As we prepare to walk into the future, we pray for the new normal to come. May our hearts be unified in you more than ever. May the tender moments of seeing someone again in person be all the more rich and treasured. Help us to come out of this pandemic better, not bitter. Help us to become more considerate of others more mindful of how we can help one another and how we can serve you and your children well. We thank you that no matter how dark the night may get, there is always hope of the dawn to come. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. And God goes with you during this time of pandemic. He's always with us. Amen.